Hey guys, so back at it with meiosis, uh, meiosis part two, if you will. Uh, I hope that in the previous screencast, one of the things you took away from that is that uh, meiosis is a process, a, pro a cell division process. One of the main differences between it and mitosis is that meiosis introduces a lot of genetic variation, whereas mitosis introduces nothing. It's just basically duplication of a cell and the cell material. Meiosis through crossing over and because it causes genetic uh, recombination, causes genetic variation. So it mixes up the different combinations of genes found on a particular chromosome that's packed into a gamete, that's, that's packed into one of those sex cells like a sperm or an egg. So genetic variation is, is a, a consequence of meiosis. And if you recall from evolution, it's a good thing. It's, it's good that we have this genetic variation in gametes because those that inherit various genes that give uh, organisms an advantage in a particular environment, those are the ones that are going to survive. So it helps their natural selection and uh, the organisms that survive and are able to reproduce are then going to pass on those genes to their offspring. So those, those uh, variations will be inherited more than others. Okay, so try to make that evolution link as we go through this. Here's the tough part when, when considering um, various parts of meiosis and how it leads to genetic variation, how various uh, chromosome combinations are packed into gametes. So remember, in this convention, blue is uh, from, from father and uh, red is from mother. Okay, so for a certain uh, human uh, male or human organism that's creating, uh, let's, let's say it's a male and it's creating um, sperm, the, the random way that chromosomes, in this case um, homologous pairs of chromosomes, are oriented will determine whether or not they're packed into gametes in a certain way. So this man's uh, uh, chromosomes that he inherited from his father, right here, uh, male and female, just depending on the random way that they orient at the metaphase plate will determine how they're packed uh, into future cells. So remember, this is just two homologous chromosome pairs. In humans, you would see a total of um, total of 23 pairs. Okay, so for simplicity, let me show two. But if all of this man's um, material that he inherited from dad is on one side, and all the rest that he inherited from mom is on one side, during that first round of division in meiosis, all of his father's genetic material that he inherited from his father and all the genetic material that he inherited from his mother uh, is going to be packed into separate uh, cells and, and, and then will separate um, differently in my meiosis 2. Right? So after meiosis 1, you get uh, homologous chromosomes separating, and you get sister chromatids packed into different cells. And then after that second round of meiosis, once these sister chromatids split, basically you get this big one and this little one both from dad because that's the only possibility out of this cell, right? Um, and then you get both from mom uh, in this cell. So technically, for the organism that inherits these, it's the DNA inherited from straight from grandma, right? Uh, and this one's going to be all of your father's mother's genetic material. So this would be from, from grandma. These are all uh, the same. However, if you flip that and you have father on one side and father on the other side, and, and mother on the other side, mother on the other side, basically can get new combinations. So in this case, your dad would pass on uh, chromatids from his father here and chromatids from his mother here, and vice versa here. Chromatids from his mother, chromatids from his uh, father. And you, you see after that second round of meiosis, you get um, a little more of a mix uh, in that case. So this is um, it's like an independent assortment. It'll It'll come back to us when we get to genetics, but basically this, this random alignment at the metaphase plate determines this randomness. Okay, so I rushed through this part last time, but I wanted to go over it again. In prophase one, when you form a tetrad uh, of homologous chromosomes here, remember this is uh, the blue represents homologous chromosome from dad, red represents a homologous chromosome from mom, and they're duplicated, so there's one, two sister chromatids, one, two sister chromatids. 
So those four create what's called a tetrad. Tetrads make contact at various sites. So you see a contact site down here and a contact site down here. Um, at these contact sites, crossing over occurs where literally, uh, if I blow this up a little bit, genetic material from one organism will be transferred here and genetic material from another organism will be transferred here. Um, I'm sorry, not organism, from, from a chromatid. And basically what you see is the red switches over here and the blue switches over here. They line up at the metaphase plate here and once they're pulled apart at anaphase, what you see is, uh, again, this genetic material here that's different, genetic material here that's different. So they've been separated and they have different genetic material on them. Now we're going to go through uh, the second round of meiosis. So here we're at metaphase two. We know that in, meta in, in meiosis two, uh, we separate sister chromatids this time. So you're going to make a break here and a break here. And then these chromatids are basically separated into gametes here. And because of that genetic recombination, because of that crossing over, you see here that there are novel combinations of uh, genetic material on different chromatids. So this was normally a red chroma, uh, chromatid, and now it's got these different blue parts. Okay, so that genetic recombination creates um, genetic diversity, basically genetic variability. Okay, speaking a little bit about chromosomes, uh, you have to know a lot about chromo chromosomes to talk about this stuff. Uh, so let's review some of this. Uh, again, this is a chromosome drawn drawn here. Along it, you'll see various genes. This is a gene, this is a gene, this is a gene, this is a gene. And the genes can be for various things. This could be for, let's say, hair color. Let's say this one's for eye color. Okay, it's a little it's oversimplifying it, but you get the point. This chromosome here, an interphase will duplicate to create two sister chromatids, so keep that vocabulary um, the same also. Uh, now, because these are homologous chromosomes, so um, if you had a, a, a duplicate here of this, you'd see a chromosome like this with the same banding pattern. Right, this should be a little longer. Uh, and literally, you'd see that these are the same genes between these homologous chromosomes. So because of that, you know, whenever you get crossing over, say this gene, this gene swaps over here and this gene swaps over here, you maintain all of the genes that you need for the most part. There's sometimes there's errors and we'll talk about that, but a normal healthy individual will make sure that they have this gene right here. They'll just sometimes switch from uh, one chromatid to another, okay, and vice versa down here, sometimes that happens. So just keep that in mind that when you do that crossing over step, that the genetic main information is, for the most part, maintained. Sometimes there's errors, but in normal, normal healthy individuals, you, you keep those, those same genes. Okay, so let's compare mitosis and meiosis uh, to wrap up this, this little section before your quiz. Uh, for mitosis, um, mitosis creates diploid cells. Okay, so you're going to start off with a diploid cell here, and that's going to duplicate to give you uh, two sister chromatids. Okay, so uh, you see this red chromosome here, for example, has duplicated to be um, contained sister chromatids. The same thing happens over in meiosis as well. You still uh, start off with a diploid cell, um, so you have individual chromosomes shown here, and uh, when they duplicate, you know there there are chromosomes with that are shown in the in the form of sister chromatids. However, in meiosis, unlike mitosis, you get this tetrad formation. So, in other words, the chromosome from mom, say chromosome one, chromosome two from dad, here shown as sister chromatid pairs, they stick together to form this tetrad. Okay, so you don't see that over here for, for mitosis, do you? You see this one randomly over here and this one randomly over here. This one's not joined to this one. They're not joined as they are over here. In meiosis, they form tetrads. Those homologous chromosomes stay joined together. That is so they can cross over and create genetic variability.
So here's the other thing, because, uh, because those chromosomes in mitosis, those homologous chromosomes don't stay together, what you see is they, they line up uh, independently. So this one, this one, although they're homologous, uh, you don't see them join together. Likewise, this one, this one, although they're homologous, they don't join together. However, in meiosis, they do. So those two little ones stay together, and those two big ones stay together. You can see that there's contact being made here, um, and there will be crossover leading to um, genetic variation through recombination of your genetic information. Okay, so because of that, mitosis uh, and, and meiosis look a little different at metaphase also. Now, anaphase, when they actually separate, this is a big difference because uh, in mitosis, we don't have homologous pairs, we just have sister chromatids together. So what you'll see is that there's going to be separation right down the middle here. So basically going to separate these two sister chromatids. One goes this way, one goes that way, one goes this way, one goes that way, one goes this way, and one goes that way. Okay, because we don't have homologous chromosome pairs, it's just um, sister chromatids. So that's it, you're done. Your sister chromatids have been separated, um, you're still a diploid, uh, you still have uh, all the chromosomes you need. But in meiosis, the first thing you separate is this homologous pair, right? The one from mom, one from dad, because they stay joined together. So you make that separation. This pair of chromatids, this pair of chromatids goes this way, this pair goes this way, this pair goes this way. So you're separating those homologous chromosomes at anaphase one. And then, you know, basically you go and telophase creates new cells. So you still have sister chromatids joined together right here and right here. And that's why you need another round of uh, meiosis. Um, this should say meiosis. Okay. Um, because you're still not down to, to haploid, you still have two uh, chromatids here that need to be broken up. So then for meiosis, you go to another round of division and that's shown here, where you take these chromatids and you separate them. So you go through a whole round of meiosis two, which is just like meiosis, uh, which is just like mitosis, all the same steps, and ultimately you get um, individual sister chromatids, except now they're called chromosomes, uh, packed into different cells. You also get this genetic variation along the way. So keep that in mind um, that again, once again, meiosis introduces genetic variation. Uh, we are now down to haploid cells. Um, we've produced gametes in this case. And I think that's going to do it. I think that's basically it for this section. So um, just to review, meiosis creates a lot of genetic variation because of that first prophase step where there's a tetrad and a crossover. Anaphase 1 in meiosis separates homologous chromosomes. And because the homologous chromosomes, uh, uh, once they're separated, they're still sister chromatids, so we need to go through another round of division to separate them. So in my meiosis, there's two rounds of division. That second round of division brings those cells down to haploid. So it's creating those special haploid cells, the gametes, that are required for the human life cycle. That's going to be the sperm and egg that come together to create uh, a fertilized zygote, right? So that restores the diploid state in that organism, continues to grow and becomes a trillion cell organism um, as a human. Okay, so we'll go over that again in class. I hope that helps. Uh, see you next time.